the items. If we talk about a product that was designed 10 years ago, it is not the best product to be using today. If we now just talk a little bit about features, what is so special about the FX range? We have actually focused on five very key areas. The first area is greater energy saving. We can all see that there is a lot of pressure on us now to reduce the amount of energy that we use for two reasons. One, in terms of cost, but also in terms of protecting the environment. But just saving energy is not enough. We also have to have long-term reliability. If we go back to our customers and we say, what is the number one priority? They will always come back and say reliability. You have got to have a product that is reliable. If we talk about uh, improving energy, the normal thing is we go for very high efficiency. And one thing that sometimes suffers there is our ability to handle RAG. Okay, so it's not good enough for us just to have high efficiency. We also need to make sure that we have the absolute best when it comes to handling solids and handling RAG. Number four that we have is future-proof. As Peter already said, there is a lot of legislation on the books at the moment. We want to make sure that if we give you a product now, it is already in accordance with that legislation. We do not want to have to come back in three years' time and say, the legislation's changed, therefore we have to go and start changing equipment. And the fifth and the last, it has to be sustainable. And when we talk about sustainable, we talk about our manufacturing operation, but we also talk about the way that you operate that pump in real life. If we go one level further down in detail, why is this now setting a new standard within our industry? We are the first manufacturer now to give you an IE3 premium efficiency motor. Okay. There is no one else on the market at the moment that can give you that premium efficiency motor. What are the benefits of that? It's very clearly to see. First benefit we have is it's much better in terms of efficiency. But it also has benefits in terms of reliability. If you use high efficiency motors, they are low temperature, which means that we have much lower temperatures on the stator and we also have much lower temperatures on the bearings. Another key thing is incentive schemes. There are a lot of incentive schemes that are available today which if you have the premium efficiency motors you will be able to make use of. Why have we focused on the motor efficiency? First thing is if we talk about motor efficiency as far as we see it's a quick win. If we increase the efficiency of the motor, we do not significantly increase the risk of blockage. So the starting point for us always when we design a new product is that we have to get the absolute best in terms of efficiency out of the motor and then we start working with the hydraulics. If we talk about hydraulic efficiency, if we want to get the best in terms of energy management, we have to have good motor efficiency, but we also have to have good hydraulic efficiency. The FX range is the best in the market in terms of efficiency. It also has a 75 millimeter free solids passage. So it's not efficiency at any cost, it is efficiency with the free solids passage. Again, that is a unique feature on the market today. What we can also see is, if we look at the product range, we have now increased the number of hydraulics we have so that we have a better overall hydraulic coverage. It's very easy for me to sit up here and actually talk about best of market. How do I know in the end of the day that we are actually the best of market when it comes to efficiency? The way that we know is that we have benchmarked all products. Every product on the market we have actually looked at and we have looked to see what the efficiency is. The targets that we have set for the efficiency come from that benchmarking exercise. Just excuse me one second. If we talk about efficiency improvement, what sort of efficiency improvement can you expect to see? If we talk about small products, what we expect to see is efficiency improvement of somewhere between 20 and 25 points of efficiency. 
If we talk about the larger products, we expect to see efficiency improvement of somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. This is not a small efficiency improvement. How do we get that efficiency improvement? We take some of it from the motor in terms of using the IE3 motors, and we also take some from the hydraulic in terms of using a new hydraulic design. The second part of the efficiency story is actually rag handling. And as we said before, it's no good having a pump that has a very, very good efficiency if it is no good at actually handling rags and it blocks all the time. If you look at the FX range, we have a completely new range of impellers. And again, here what we have done is that we've gone back to basic principles in terms of the design of that impeller. The starting point for that was actually, again, to bring all of our pumps back to the laboratories and test them and to test them to find out how good they actually are in terms of rag handling. In addition to that, we have also tested all of our competitors pumps to see how good our competitors pumps are in terms of rag handling. One of the most important things when we actually uh, look at blockage is that if we go to the field today, what we can see is that there is a big increase in the amount of what we call soft blockage. What we mean by soft blockage is we mean by a build-up of rag catching up in the impeller that builds up over a period of time and eventually either greatly reduces the performance or actually stops the pump from pumping completely. If we look at the number of applications we work with, we can also see the number of high rag pumping stations is increasing considerably. Why do we see that? Two reasons. One, if we look at the sanitary items that are actually going into the toilet, it is very different now and also that we can see the amount of water being consumed is reducing. So if we look at the properties of wastewater today, we can see it's very, very different again to what it was five years ago. The concentration of rag to water is now much higher. So an impeller that was designed for the wastewater five years ago is not necessarily going to be the best impeller today. One of the other things that we've done a lot of work on is trying to come up with a test where we can actually quantify the blockage resistance of an impeller. If we talk about efficiency, it's a hard measurement. It's very easy to understand how good one pump is against another. When we talk about blockage, it is not a hard measurement. It comes down to opinions in terms of how good a particular impeller is. So a key part of this actually development process was to come up with a standard way of actually measuring blockage. The way that we have done that is that we have looked at all of the sanitary items that you would find in wastewater and we have then gone through a test process to understand which are going to be the most difficult in terms of pumping. What we've also done is that we have invested in a number of test laboratories where we can actually test pumps to actually work out the exact blockage resistance of each of the different impeller designs. We do a number of different tests. We have a standard rag test in terms of putting certain quantities of rag and we also do a lot of videoing so that we can actually